Good morning, this is Kara Coffey and the Ministry of Uncover No More. Uh, this is in loving memory of Tate Publishing that I'm doing this and myself. And authors that are Christians, uh, by and large, because Tate Publishing was a Christian organization that helped those of us that were on a stricter budget than a lot of the rich people <laughs> uh, to, to actually get our voice out there. And it was quite a miraculous time of my life, if you want the honest truth. I had not lost my identity at that point, but I have determined to do something because of the schisms in my family far and wide. They have, they have brought me to a place, the schisms have brought me to a place of an understanding that is unmentionable because it's going into what was in the Double Moon's Prayer Initiative, the tomb of Lazarus. And of course, Lazarus was res resurrected. And um, I actually have a friend on Twitter who uh, who is a uh, immortal Lazarus in all capital letters. And, he is uh, a very great friend of mine. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is read this book, but I'm going to take the people out who are behaving as my enemy. They have literally... Uh, they're younger than me, they're older than me, they're the same age as me, it's a bunch of different people. They know who they are. And I've already released a blog article on all of my blogs. I don't remember which blog, or blog it is. For First John 1, 9, which is, Confess your sin one to another, and he, being the King of Kings, is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse you of unrighteousness. And... I'm calling it with my father, Robert Hilton Beatty Jr., who has come back and then disappeared. Uh, when I talk about that part of my life, according to Hebrews 11, what that means is I literally um, run into people that I know are immortals, and I can tell who they are. I've done it with Curtis's mother, Lois Elizabeth Meller Coffey, I've done it with um, my mother, Mary Virginia Klonick Beatty. Uh, my brother keeps coming back in different body form. Patrick Clayton Klonick Beatty. Um, so he is here to remain. I know nothing about that world that I'm talking you, to you about face to face for one reason. If he and I are in the same room for one day, he would explain to me the mysteries. It is the same with the King of Kings who has shown himself to me in many body forms. I, d I went through a, a, a time as I was writing and living through the horror of what I just went through, which uh, for some years, which was 2010 until actually right now, I'm choosing to come out of the horror of the betrayal that I just lived through uh, since really September through December of 2008. But I'm going to, uh, there, there was a lot of shocking things happening to our family because our property that my dad and his brother built is ha a haunted house. Now, you, houses, there's th actually three houses. And you're going to hear about heavenly doors. Yes, I set up heavenly doors. No, you're not going to find out about that in the course of what I'm doing with Uncover No More, A Four Blood Moon Testimony, Volume 3. What you are going to find is that I am going to cut out those people who are still behaving as my enemy because they don't want to own what they actually did to some of the family members I'm dealing with uh, to move forward. They just don't want to own that shit. Well, do you therefore, uh, in my line of sight, uh, consider yourself and your own opinion more important than relationships. And that is immoral. That is an immoral stance. 
to be living with. Not to mention the fact, and I have my therapist agreeing with this and actually explaining to me how there are levels of what I'm about to say. You are sadistic. There are a lot of young people who are paying their bills. They will be nice in their own little circles. This is millennials and Gen Z, and they're sadistic. They enjoy bringing pain to people in their lives. They'll spin their existence into a lie by telling lies about parents and other people. They're not balanced at all. Uh, a good example of that today, I saw it on Twitter, Ivanka Trump is one of these kind. And she's wearing, she was, she, she voted. And uh, so they, she posted a picture. She has not been removed from Twitter like her daddy was, Donald Trump. Um, and uh, she's wearing a sweater with yin yang symbol all over it. Well, she's no more a balancing force than I am a wicked force. Mm -mm, no. Ivanka Trump is a puppet head of womanhood in the Republican Party that is grotesque indeed. Grotesque indeed. She allows her daddy and other men in her life to form her existence. She's idolatrous. Now, I do not want her to stay there, of course. She has children. I don't want them to stay there, but I really don't think there's a lot of hope for people like Ivanka Trump because they're caught in the mesmerizing world of work. And that's easy to see. I'm not going to get into it if full care I would if it's the Democrats that are the billionaires. I'm not going to get into that. That's none of my business. All right. What is my business is to bring my family, my personal family, in alignment with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, whose testimony is true and uh, who is the tribe Judah lion. And um, that's as obvious as my life song is. So I'll read the back matter first. This is coming from a Christian perspective, which would have been appropriate had the evangelical world come with the king. You have to vote Democrat in America to be with the King of Kings. There are no ands, ifs, or buts about it, literally. So I really am a Christian who went with the king, but I'm no longer a Christian, and I'm going to be, uh, along with readings from Uncovered No More Volume 3, where I will actively edit out. I will have to jump head, stop, things like that, because I'm going to actively not read a good bit of this book. I am not interested in supporting people who hate me. You have no idea the conversations I had to have last night, America. I do. I have become a stoic, among other things. It's to protect my empath mistake as a physical, metaphysical being, just like everybody, like Ivanka Trump. What you do with your life isn't my business, but what you do to control me and mine is. Does anybody have any questions? So this is the back matter of Uncovering No More, Volume 3, by Kara Ann Groffy, in all capitals. God the Father desires your fellowship. Let Uncovering No More, a four blood moon testimony, share this reality today. Have you ever wanted to understand the book of Revelation from the Bible in light of current events? Do you ever wonder if that book has any relation to world and time-wide events in the modern day? Are you scared the world is being destroyed? Kara Coffey could have said yes to all these questions, 
but not anymore because she testified through a seven-year tribulation framed within four blood moons from 2014 to 2015 in the United States of America. Read her story. Read your story. Be inspired to watch and pray. Agnostic me is going to say, you don't pray. Atheist me is going to say, what the fuck? Um, I meditate. I don't like to use the word pray anymore because it's too connected to Christianity and that's a negative thing right now. But whatever I do, it's called invocation for me as a sorceress, as a pagan sorceress, as an agnostic. Because you just don't, you know that mysterious things exist as an agnostic, but you don't believe in any of it. So there's a real freedom to express your metaphysical side how you desire, my loves. And I invoke. That means I'm a creation expert or I wouldn't still be here. Bitch America. <clears throat> Jesus Christ has overcome the world. Duh. He is returning someday just as he promised in the Bible. Let's get ready. He's here. So I'm fast forwarding my testimony, editing out the bullshit which wasn't, Christianity has fallen away. They're Laodicean by and large in America. That's Revelation 1 through 3. I'm not going to have to prove a damn thing this time. <laughs> That's nice. God the Father desires your fellowship. Let uncover no more a four blood moon testimony. Share this reality today. Jesus Christ came and died, then arose to continue the worldwide process of deliverance from the curse of the knowledge of good and evil. Come with Kara into a realm of beauty that is bold, hopeful, yet tearfully mindful of good, overcoming evil in 2015 and beyond. Okay. Um, <clears throat> God the Father at this time, in my testimony, I'm God the Mother here. Kara, are you deity? Shut up. You can call me what the fuck ever you want, America. I am who I am. I'm not ashamed. I have no regrets. And I do what I do for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <clears throat> God the Father does not desire everyone's fellowship. That is a truth which is passing away, Joel in Acts chapter 2, as the Holy Spirit is poured out on all flesh. I actually am a Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost figure, as are other immortals. They are making themselves obvious on Twitter. They are real. They're having, on Twitter, they're having to call themselves parody, at least some of them. The ones that don't call themselves parody, that are there with me, If uh, Twitter decides to take them away, you've already got one God the Father figure who is my pastor from a distance at the good God above saying, mm. <laughs> he has more power than you understand. He can disenfranchise Twitter over time. He's been, he's been there. He's well established with his God pod and everything. And I'm throwing runes for him as Terra, Sorceress Terra, Archangel Terra. If you think that I haven't had different body forms of a gray-haired man showing up to various places to keep me safe as Sorceress Terra, then you don't understand the faithfulness of God the Father or Father figures anywhere. I call them all Jesus because I, I, I don't know. We all are Jesus. I'm a vagina one. Because we are saving. We are do, making good greater and greatest and evil pass away. <coughs> Please don't ever forget that I'm the chick that put one account on one of my blogs that isn't passing away this time. <laughs> and uh, 
he completely wiped out all of the Apostle Paul's writing of the New Testament. Pastors, you get in the pulpit and keep teaching the Apostle Paul, you're in trouble with the King of Kings. I didn't say that that account is the King of Kings. I didn't say it all. That's none of your business. Which of the accounts that are parody or otherwise are there that is the actual man? You can guarantee I have seen him in many body forms at this point. Am I confused? Hell no. Heaven no. You have no idea the conversations I had to have last night to keep my family safe. Now, let me open the book. This is a 15 minute video. Okay. Yep. I will read until I don't want to read anymore. Let's see how long it is and then I will keep that as my <clears throat> discipline. For the love of I am. Introduction. Let me introduce myself today as I begin again. While I say I'm beginning again, to write this book means I also delve back into my past across 49 and a half years to tell a ministerial story that I've written across three other books in a different way. My first two books are in the process of being released into a second edition at this time, and they have been retitled Uncovered No More, A White Stone, and Uncovered No More, Praying for America. There are none left of Praying for America. I ain't praying for you anymore, you bullshitters. Republican Party, I'm talking to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> I removed these two books from publication and sale in 2014 in order to continue to thoroughly deny the quote-unquote 666, according to Revelation 13, because I was in a rather large deliverance story that is being told in this third volume. They are titled differently now because at first they were two volumes titled Uncovered No More. However, the subtitles were different. As my story progressed, I realized Uncovered No More is our ministry in Austin, Texas, and not only books, so the subtitles shifted to better fit the actual place each volume has within the initial testimony of how this ministry came to be. The third book is called The Untold Story of Uncovered No More. It's actually a book I have somewhere. It's a blog book that I had published. It has a subtitle in my heart of hearts that comes forth in the conclusion of this book. It is also to me a lovely, though difficult tale of a haunting episode of bereavement. And so that is the subtitle. The untold story is now on a thumb drive and out of my Dropbox. Thus, this book is the third volume and the untold story is not numbered in this set. If something of importance needs to be kept in your memory for later testimony in this book, I have bolded it for your convenience so you can remember it. Well, you're not going to know that. You either remember it and study to show yourself approved, whoever you are, or not. I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> this is as according to the new names in White Stones of Revelation chapter 2. Only God knows our names in this place. That's God, mother, and father, and yeah, I know your name. <laughs> I don't understand new names and white stones yet as fully as I would like. Uh, I understand them more today than I did the day I typed that. That is how my journey goes. It's called evolution. It's called reincarnation. It's called paganism. It's called agnosticism. I ain't putting the atheist side in here because... The atheist side of me is going to tell the atheist you to get a fucking grip. You have a metaphysical side. Stop raging at stupid Christians. God have mercy. You've got a life too. Okay. Oh. Okay, it's time for me to stop. Because... Two people that are very important in my life just expressed themselves. So let's see. Ah, oh, 20 minutes. I, th I knew it. I knew it was going to be 20 minutes. Let's finish this paragraph. I don't understand new names on white stones yet as fully as I would like. However, I can say that as a prophetess, <clears throat> I'm a sorceress now. That's called evolution. <clears throat> 
I see the connections associated with Revelation 2.17, and so I have a responsibility before God to testify these connections sometimes as I see them. The ministry of Uncover No More is a white stone, and I know a few other ministries that are conscious of how they are white stones too. All right, so Kara will take her hand, take my hand, and walk through love's door and be free. I'm going to use a blue pen. Vote blue no matter who today, people. I'm going to write a line here. I'm going to date it in just a moment. Have a nice day, America.